Play fake here on first down. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And a nice start there to the aerial attack to pick up the first. And I think preseason is officially over now. Getting into the groove of the regular season, that's a great way to get started. First drive of the season, what a nice completion. First carry for Leonard Fournette. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. A loss of a full three yards. And now it's second down. And that was a nice play by the defense. And it is tough to be an offensive lineman nowadays, especially if you're dealing with how the defensive tackles have evolved. Their quickness, their agility, their speed has changed the big guys in the middle, the center and the offensive guards. Formerly, they were just power players. Now they have to be let up. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Olivier Vernon in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. And incomplete on the deep ball. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. And this is a way. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. NFL carry for Saquon Barkley. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. across midfield and just shy of the 40. That one's good for 35 yards on the ground and a first down. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. They go play action here on first down. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on this first drive. Instead, second down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Second down, here's Barkley. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Now a play fake, and it's Lawletta. He finds Beckham complete. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. On Al Beckham, 41 yards. And the Giants are going to take a first quarter lead. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. 
Rosas good with the extra point. And it's now a 7-0 game. Rosas now to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Jags heading out on offense. Last year, we said, Charles, one of these years it has to come together for the Jaguars, doesn't it? Well, guess what? It certainly did. They won double-digit games for the first time in 10 seasons, and they picked up two more wins in the playoffs before falling in that tough one to New England. And they decided that on offense... They were going to be a team that knocked you off the ball and ran it. That's why they drafted Leonard Fournette out of LSU, and he gave them some toughness and an identity. Quarterback Blake Bortles often criticized, but elevated his play in the playoffs, both with his legs and his arm. But the defense, that's where the big transition happened. Yannick Ngakwe coming off the edge. Calais Campbell maybe the best player in the defensive line in the league last season. But Jalen Ramsey out at corner. He gives them their swagger, he gives them their look, and he gives them great play on the edge. They'll run it again with Yeldon. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. He lost two there, and it's third down. Play action, Darnold. He rifles one that's intercepted. Isaiah Oliver with the INT. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. So the first interception of his career under center, and you knew it was going to happen sooner or later. It has to. And I know he feels like the world is just tumbling down at this moment, but there's got to be some veteran somewhere, some mentor that's going to tell him, Hang in there, my man. Plenty more to come. Keep firing. A first down carry for Barkley. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple. Down inside the 35 to the 34. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. the 28. It'll be a gain of six, and they're going to have a third down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. They'll try to run for it with Barkley. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding him to no gain. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. It's what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find the matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete.
An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. On second and ten, Darnold. And the catch made here by Marquise Lee. First catch for the man who led the Jags in catches a year ago, and it's a Jacksonville first down. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Here's Darnold now on second down. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now, first and 10 at the 42-yard line. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Gone, 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 gone. Second down and 10, Darnold. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Josh Jones. The truck. And now off to the races. Down the right side. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Giants touchdown. What you just saw there, first round talent, second year, even more success. A pick six for a touchdown. And a great play. And it's tough for these guys, you've told me before, to adjust in the secondary as a first-year guy. So that sophomore season, it's big for them. They really start to expand the playbook for them even more. Sometimes they dumb it down a little bit to make them comfortable year one. By year two, they should have all the nuances, and now they've adjusted to the speed of NFL play as well. Show right there. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Detroit! Detroit! Ah! They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off at the 45. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. So that is three interceptions now in this first half. And you hate to ask the question, but... Yeah, let's be honest, we're thinking about it. Do you need to go in a different direction next series? Potentially. We know that he's probably not going to be able to. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Malik Jackson continuing to fight downfield. The big tackle gets him for a loss of 11. Now they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. On second down, here's Lawletta. 
There's the first NFL catch for a name to remember. Equinemi is St. Brown. A nice pick up there, 19 yards. And they're set up better for third. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got the guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Third and two, Lawletta. And that is incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. And now out come the Jags. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily to look at your plays. Oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. And he's able to get this one up to the eight-yard line this time. A gain of six there on first. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. The interception last drive there. He hits the reliable target. Second down, Darnold. Left side complete, Severian Jenkins. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. It's been a very one-sided game so far. they got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. Trying to lay one up deep. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. After the incomplete pass here now Detroit, is second Detroit. and ten. A play fake, and it's Donald. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Strong safety, Landon Collins, the one who got a hand in there, knocked it away. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Landon Collins. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. We haven't even escaped the first half, and he's already thrown four picks. And Brandon, back in the good old days, probably back before you were born, if your starter threw four in the first half, he might throw eight or more for the game because they weren't going to throw him out. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Lawletta from the 50. And it's going back up. Now he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. And they get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. As long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage because man coverage, you're typically running away from someone and not worried about traffic coming out on the other end. And Ingram holds it in. And he's going to get this inside the 30. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. Coming off play action, Loletta. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit, 
Ball pops out, incomplete. But he kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. A handoff to Barkley. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. And Rosas puts this one through. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. This offense trots back out there now, and as they do, Charles, one thing to point out that we saw a second ago are some of the new rules in the NFL this year regarding kickoffs. Yeah, nowadays, the kickoff team, no more running starts. Remember that when you can you got to circle a guy around, and here he goes? No more. You have to start, you know, close to the ball, and when it's kicked, then you get to take off and go, so you can't build up your speed that way. Also, when you're returning it, remember those wedges that we used to say where guys would form together, two or three guys? No more of those. So it would be a lot more man-on-man, one-on-one blocking. And also they have rules about where people have to be when the ball's kicked, where they have to be when the ball's caught. So to me, it's much more like a punt return than it is an actual kickoff return. So I'm eager to see if teams now take their punt returners, those nifty guys who make people miss in the open field, and make them the kickoff returners as well, because I think you can still get big plays in this area if you have the right people back there. The Jaguars on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and six. Throwing here on third down, Darnold. There's the first NFL catch for D.J. Shark. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is taken at the 18. Call that a 46-yard punt with a net of 40 on the six-yard return. And it'll be Giant football first and 10. The Giants making their way out, and at this point, you would have to think that all mentions of last year may be erased from team history, or at least that's what they want. It clearly, Charles, correct me if I'm wrong, the talent on this team, too good for another 3-13 and 13 finish, right? And I think that was reflected in their draft in 2018. Because if it was an all-out rebuild, they would have drafted a quarterback in the two. Instead, they drafted Saquon Barkley. So that signals to me they want to get back to running the football and trying to punish people on offense and take the pressure off of Eli Manning. And on the defensive side of the ball, they obviously have to get better. But believe it or not, you know what can really help them there? Their head coach, Pat Shermer, comes from a defensive family, understands how valuable it is, and loves the toughness and the identity that a good defense can provide. They keep it with Barkley on first down. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. The Giants on third down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. They'll fake it. Now Lawletta. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Calais Campbell. 
with a big time sack on third down and it'll be a loss of seven and the Giants send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure... If something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. On first down, Darnold. They go on the screen, it's Yeldon. And he will lose yardage on the play, back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. On second down, here's Fournette, and he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. It's a loss of two, now third down. So we've reached half. All right, we will save the week one highlights and apparently get right back to the action here in the third. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spend the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half nice first half that we've had guys but be prepared for some change-ups we're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half see how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively and they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45 that burst good for 20 and a first down and you remember pre-draft, there's a lot of speculation that the Giants should look for their future quarterback at number two with a great possibility. Remember, Sam Darnold from USC was still on the board, but they passed on him to take this runner, Saquon Barkley. And this is exactly why. They think he can extend the life of Eli Manning's career and give them 1,000-yard seasons year after year. They haven't had a 1,000-yard season since 2012. Ahmad Bradshaw did it then. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Well, those Giant fans, you know that they love seeing Saquon Barkley wearing their jersey, but it's interesting, he actually grew up a Jets fan. Yeah, I wonder what his dad was thinking. What would Big Al was thinking on draft night? Had to be so happy for his son. But they grew up watching Jets games, just sit together, watch it. In fact, Dad has a Jets tattoo. Yes. Okay, so that tells you about how much he loves that team. You think Saquon's going to fix that and make it a Giants tattoo? Yeah, he wants to make that a Giants tattoo. That family, though, they fully converted. They're supporting the G-Men. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's a give to Barkley, and he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Tackle that time by Ronnie Harrison. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. 
The Giants on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. They'll fake the handoff. Now Lawletta. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. No gain at all on the play there. That brings up four. Usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve. And that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no gain. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. That, that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play clock down to zero. And this is not the way to start a drive. That's going to set him back five yards. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Play action. It's Darnold. And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. Olivier Vernon in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Now that after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. To throw on second down is Darnold. And now here's another interception. Picked off by Josh Jackson. And that pick just sets him up beautifully right down near the goal line. I remember being in a defensive meeting back when I was in college. And our defensive coordinator says, we're going to call this be who you are defense. D linemen, you play the run. Linebackers, be aware of anything. And secondary, you play the pass. That way, you're all set, ready for whatever they put out there. Now Saquon Barkley, and he takes it into the end zone for a giant TD. Saquon Barkley with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Giants use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. PAT up and good by Rosas. And that stretches the lead all the way up to 27. Rosas now to kick this one away. This one taken from the seven. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at halftime, actually. <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. He finds Yeldon. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. Detroit! Detroit! 
On first and ten, Darnold. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Back to the air, Darnold on second down. And my goodness, another interception. Picked up by Josh Jones. And they will finally get him as he's all the way down near the 40-yard line. Thought they had something going there to break that goose egg here in the second half, but to no avail. Hope was alive until that interception. What a terrific play, taking the ball away after it looked like they were starting a drive. And now that shutout still standing. You know that's something those defensive guys hold a lot of pride on, too. No doubt about it. They are excited about where they are in this game. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves them with a second and three. Again, it's Barkley. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. The Giants on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This time it's third and three. the gun, Loletta. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Leopard! Leopard! They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. First career pick for the rookie, Josh Jackson. And a terrific return there. They're finally able to corral him down near the 11-yard line. And maybe he telegraphed it a little bit right there. You've got a cornerback knowing that he's going against a rookie quarterback. He stepped in and picked it. You think he had a great week of preparation looking forward to this opportunity? And the second part of that is when you're a young quarterback, you are going to stare down targets. But oftentimes, your playbook hasn't expanded to give you full field reads as well. Makes it a little bit tougher for him. This is Barkley, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and it'll be second and 12. Hey, hey, we got, uh, we got four. 
They'll run it again with Barkley. And this carry, despite the good move, will be stopped short of the 10. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave them with a third and 11. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. Throwing on third down, Loretta. And Ingram's got it. Touchdown, Giants. Evan Ingram, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Giants use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. And it's no good. Oh, he misses the extra point, and our score stays right where it is. Rosas now to kick this one away. This one taken from the seventh. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You go over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far... Just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. Again, it's Fournette. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. When you put together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. The Jaguars on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 14. Lampard! Lampard! A handoff to Fournette. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Nine yards on the carry, but it's going to lead to a fourth down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. The Giants' offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. Let's not forget, a year ago, this was a last-place team in their division in the National Football League. How quickly the fortunes can turn. And somewhere, there's a former commissioner smiling down and looking because parity was something he was looking for in this league and it plays itself out year after year. Last to first is not something that's uncommon. Yeah, a season ago, they didn't have one performance like this, but they put it all together in this ballgame. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagel, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. 
Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Well, they'll take that every time with a lead first down, fourth quarter, getting eight yards. He loved that. They will take it. And you have to ask the defensive guys, why did you give it? I mean, you know the situation. You're down. Have to stop them. Have to get the football back. But eight yards on first down puts them back on their heels. It's a gain of four there, and it gives them a new set of downs. but nothing there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. But it was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. A handoff, Barkley running left, and he'll be stopped up quickly here at the 38. Telvin Smith that time there to make the play. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Time for a break. This one, all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. The Giants on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and nine. On third down, Barkley. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Aldrich Rosas now to try the Giants' field goal. From the right hash, this from 53. And the kick by Rosas is good. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. Don't forget today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo. Exactly. Going Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because you're not going to want that feeling. No, here. you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. They'll run it again with four and Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Here's Darnold. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. It's caught inside the 25. A big third down play there for the Jags. 47 yards. And partner, this first week, this first game that we get to call together, so special every year, week one. You had the fly over the big American flag out there before the game, all the hoopla, just having football back, so special. It is an opening day, opening game. There's just nothing like it.